In the later Roman Empire, Bagorda were groups of peasant insurgents who arose during the crisis of the 3rd century, and persisted until the very end of the Western Empire, particularly in the less Romanized areas of Gallia and Hispania, where they were exposed to the depredations of the late Roman state and the great landowners and clerics who were its servants. The invasions Military anarchy and disorders of the 3rd century provided a chaotic and ongoing degradation of the regional power structure within a declining empire into which the Bagordi achieved some temporary and scattered successes, under the leadership of members of the underclass as well as former members of local ruling elites. Etymology The name probably means fighters. C.V. Nixon assesses the Bagordi from the official imperial viewpoint, as bands of brigands who roamed the countryside looting and pillaging. J.C.S. Eliot Owen interprets the most completely assembled documentation and identifies the Bagordi as impoverished local free peasants, reinforced by brigands, runaway slaves and deserters from the legions who were trying to resist the ruthless labor exploitation of the late Roman proto-feudal manorial and military systems, and all manner of punitive laws and levies in the marginal areas of the empire, suppressing the Bagordi. After the Bagordi came to the full attention of the central authorities about AD 284, re-establishment of the settled social order was swift and severe. The peasant insurgents were crushed in A.D. 286 by the Caesar Maximian and his subordinate Carasius under the aegis of the Augustus Diocletian. Their leaders are mentioned as Amandus and Elianus, although E.M. Whiteman, in her Gallia Belgica proposes that the two belong to the local Gallo-Roman landowning class who then became tyrants and most likely rebelled against the grinding taxation and garnishing of their lands, harvests and manpower by the predatory agents of the late Roman state. The panegyric of Maximian, dating to AD 289 and attributed to Claudius Maimatinus, relates that during the Bagordi uprisings of AD 284-285 in the districts around Lugdunum, simple farmers sought military garb, the plowman imitated the infantryman, the shepherd the cavalryman, the rustic harvester of his own crops the barbarian enemy. In fact they shared several similar characteristics with the Germanic Herali people. Maimatinus also called them two-shaped monsters, emphasizing that while they were technically imperial farmers and citizens, they were also marauding rogues who had become foes to the empire. Recurrences the phenomenon recurred in the mid-4th century in the reign of Constantius, in conjunction with an invasion of the Alemanni, although imperial control was re-established by the Frankish general Silvanus. His subsequent betrayal by court rivals forced him into rebellion and his work was undone. In around AD 360 the historian Aurelius Victor is the sole writer to note the attacks of Bagordi in the peripheries of the larger towns and walled cities. In the 5th century Bagordi are noted initially in the Loire Valley in Brittany, circa AD 409-17 fighting various armies sent against them by the last seriously effective Western Roman general, Flavius Aetius. Aetius used federates such as the Alans under their king Goa to try and suppress a Bacordic revolt in Armorica. Saint Germanus got mercy for the Bagordi but they later revolted again under a leader called Tibato. They are also mentioned around the same time in the province of Macedonia, the only time they emerge in the Eastern Empire, which may be connected with economic hardships under Arcadius. By the middle of the 5th century they are mentioned in control of parts of central Gaul and the Ebro Valley. In Hispania, the king of the Suva, Riciar took up as allies the local Bagordi in ravaging the remaining Roman municipia, a unique alliance between Germanic ruler and rebel peasant. That the depredations of the ruling classes were mostly responsible for the uprising of the Bagordi was not lost on the 5th century writer of historicized polemic. 
Salvian, setting himself in the treatise de gubernation a dei the task of proving God's constant guidance. He declares in Book I that the misery of the Roman world is all due to the neglect of God's commandments and the terrible sins of every class of society. It is not merely that slaves and servants are thieves and runaways, wine bibbers and gluttons, the rich are much worse, it is their harshness and greed that drive the poor to join the bag or die and flee for shelter to the barbarian invaders. With the final collapse of the Roman authority in the West and the rise of the successor Germanic kingdoms, the Bagordi begin to slowly disappear from recorded history. Reputation of Bagordi The reputation of the Bagordi has varied with the uses made of them in historicized narratives of the late empire and the Middle Ages. There has been some speculation that theirs was a Christian revolt, but the sparsity of information in the texts gives this little substance. Although there may well have been many Christians among them, in general they seem to have been equal parts brigands and insurgents. In the second half of the 19th century, interest in the Bagordi revived, resonating with contemporary social unrest. The French historian Jean Trithemier was famous for a nationalist view of the Bagordi. He argued that the Bagordi were an expression of national identity among the Gallic peasants, who sought to overthrow oppressive Roman rule and realize the eternal French values of liberty, equality, and brotherhood. E.A. Thompson's assessment in past and present approached the phenomenon of these rural malcontents in terms of Marxist class warfare.